Hello and welcome to the last episode of the Podcaster Hour. My name's Ian Ansegray and in today's show we're talking all about podcast hosts and promotion, what you actually need and I'm joined by the fabulous Mark Asquith. We'll be with you just after this. Welcome to the Podcaster Hour from Ecamm, helping entrepreneurs, business owners, and live streamers launch a podcast with success using the power of Ecamm Live. Grow your audience and expand your reach and learn how to plan, promote, produce, and repurpose your live show and podcast. Here's your host, Ian Anderson Gray. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This is the Podcast Hour. I would love to know where in the world you're watching from, if you're watching live. And if you have any questions for myself or my guest today, you need to put the letter Q at the start, just so that makes it a lot easier for us to spot the questions. So in today's show, I'm really excited to be joined by Mark Asworth. We're going to be talking about... um, podcast hosts. You know, we talked all about how to set up your podcast and to edit it and do all that kind of stuff. But how do you actually put it all? How, how, what's the next stage? You know, how do you actually get it out into the world? How do you promote it so that people can actually listen to it? So that's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. Also, to, just to let you know, there were loads of other cool shows on the Ecamm network. You can see them up on the screen at the moment. So do check those out. We've got a show every single day, which is amazing. So do check that out. And uh, it's time, I think, to bring in Mark uh, because... Mark is is a friend of mine. He we've seen each other at quite a few conferences over the years, um, and uh, yeah, not this year though for some reason. I don't know about that. But uh, anyway, Mark is a serial entrepreneur who has built globally successful design, marketing, software, and digital businesses since he quit his real job in two thousand and five. Built as the UK podcast expert, Mark is CEO and co-founder of Rebel Base Media, a podcast tech and strategy company that owns Captivate FM, which we've talked about on the show, Productivity, Podcast Websites, and Podcast Success Academy and Rebel Base Studios, and is well known as an insightful, thought-provoking, and actionable podcast industry keynote speaker. But also, he's a wildly approachable Brit and a Star Wars DC Comics geek. Welcome to the show, Mark. How are you doing? We need, we need to have a little, um, where's the applause when you want it? There we go. <laughs> that happens often. It happens when I do speaking gigs as well, like, you know, right at the end. Where's the applause when you want it? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> well, there, we, there we go. We were just talking about this before we started, actually. We, you know, sound effects are great for podcasts, but you need to, you need to know when, imp- when to press the button. <laughs> I did it the other day. I was on a live stream. And in fact, I just changed my rig over. I've got a roadcaster under here so I can play like, you know, sounds and stuff. And I do all my recording here. And uh, I used to have a little a little shelf that my monitor was on above the roadcaster. And I've just changed it this weekend because I've also got a Rubik's Cube that was on top of this shelf. And what happened was like an idiot, like the pro podcaster that I am, I uh, I had one of the other sliders up and it, this Rubik's cube fell onto one of the sound pads and I had no idea. So I'm talking away doing the live stream <laughs> and you've just got, you've just got this like in the background and people are just, you can hear the music. You can, and I'm thinking, what music are you talking about? So welcome to professional podcasting 101 with me, the owner of a falling Rubik's cube. <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me before. I had, um, I think one of these things, what do you call them? Little clicker things. I don't, I don't even know why I've got it right next to me now. And I think I did the same thing. So I kind of, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know, in the middle of a serious discussion. So it happens, it happens to all of us, but you know, you learn these things and you, what have you done now with your Rubik's cube? Uh, well, I've, I finished one side of it <laughs> and I've got a system. Apparently I'm trying to learn how to do it. I've not done one since I was a kid. Um, so I'm trying to learn how to do it. Um, but I just, I don't know. It's too hard, man. I've also got oh, a book it's... of crosswords and Sudoku. Never touch them, mate. I just read well, the comics. A- apparently, there is, there is like a proper method, which my, my cousin can do. He, he knows the proper method of Rubik's Cubes, and apparently if you follow it, you can solve them all, but it just does my head mm. in. But anyway, what I was going to say is that the one thing that you have done is you've put your Rubik's Cube away from your Redcaster Pro, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I've I've learned that mistake from that mistake. Um, the only thing that can now press my Roadcaster Pro is my actual fat hand and just 
you know, so if I make a mess of that, it's it's inevitable something will happen, mate. Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today about podcast hosting. We've we've talked basically about everything else. I have briefly talked about podcast hosting on the show, but obviously once you've edited your podcast and you've got it there, you've got to then get it out there in the real world. And so that's what we're going to be talking. And also how how you promote um promote your podcast and I, I'm still laughing from your email that I got this morning that you sent out to your list about uh, what was it about uh, exploding your exploding your uh, podcast audience tell us about that oh yeah <laughs> that was a funny one that was a funny one um, yeah so I sent a subject out saying explode your podcast growth with absolutely no intention of teaching people how to do that it was to call out kind of the BS that you see in the industry and a lot of a lot of industries online the entrepreneurial industry the content creation industry where everyone's wanting to 10x this and you know they're wanting to explode the other and it's you know it's 99% rubbish so i was calling that out a lot of the time and and, and in particular you know <clears throat> captivate is a our tagline is the world's only growth oriented podcaster so i can see Aaron um who's mentioned in the comments, I'm a Spreaker guy for hosting, lots you can do for six bucks a month. That is true. Um, Spreaker, I know Francesco, the CEO there very, very well. He's a good friend um, and Spreaker is fine. Um, but the problem is that a lot of people in podcasting, in my view, doesn't, you know, they don't necessarily help you to grow. And I think, you know, there's a difference between um, some people that help you to grow and some people that just provide a, a platform. And so that's what that email this morning was about, kind of calling out, a lot of the people that say they do the stuff, but don't necessarily do the stuff. Um, and I, I see it a lot in, in <clears throat> online coaching. You know, everything is $97 down from 500 grand for 15 minutes only. And you're like, what are you talking about? Like that, it's not 2012, it's not 2015. Let's just stop doing that. So that's what that was about. You know, it's, um, it's funny. And I'll tell you, this is probably a good place to start is that <clears throat> I genuinely, I put in this email, I genuinely see two things. I see people buying subscribers and buying listeners and buying reviews. And I also see on the other side of the spectrum, people making six figures a year from sponsorships with three figure downloads. And I'm talking per episode, less than a thousand downloads. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to understand what's going on. So that's, that's what the yeah. email was about. Man, no, I, I love that. And I, I'd love the, the, the way you just say that straight, because there is a lot of stuff out there that's, uh, you know, a lot of rubbish. And, at the end of the day, what is it that you're wanting to achieve? So I'll be interested, you, if you're watching live, watching the replay, what is it you're wanting to achieve with your podcast? You know, what audience levels are you wanting? Are you wanting, if you're wanting 10,000 downloads per episode, why? Why are you wanting that? You know, what is your actual outcome that you want to have? And so we, we probably need to, to talk about that. Just, um, we've got a, a few comments and questions, which I'll just um, just highlight, first of all, before we get into the meat of things. Um, so Meredith is asking a question on LinkedIn. Do you use, do you all use the interview feature for guests in Ecamp? Yes, that's what we're using today. How do you deal with the delay the guest sees on their end? It's distracting. We haven't found a solution. Well, there is a bit of a delay. Um, Mark, I don't know whether, are you seeing a little bit of a delay for you on, on the screen? Yeah, only is a little the, bit. It's only, only, only a little bit. And I think the thing is, because because of what what's happening here, because I'm outputting what what you see is, is um, Mark is is the the is what I see on my screen. So that there is a little bit of a delay for um, for Mark's video to go down the interweb tunnels to me. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. And then uh, and then back again to to Mark. So there is going to be always going to be a bit of a delay. And so what I always say uh, to people to my guests is yes, it is a little bit. There is a delay, but just try not to look at it. Just have it look at it through the corner of your eye and just look at the camera. I mean, I always recommend that my guests look at the camera, not at themselves, because otherwise it just looks a bit, looks like they're not looking at you. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so let's let's talk about what a podcast host is. Let's get right back to the, down to basics. We've edited our podcast and it's we're, we're ready for the world to hear it. So what do we need to do? Well, there's a few different things with this one, and it's all about the outcome, you know, and, and that, you, you know, Aaron, what you mentioned about the, you know, it's amazing what you can do for six bucks a month. It is, but, you know, it's, it's sort of a, um, imagine what you could do for 10 bucks a month. You know, it, it, it depends on what you want from this thing. Um, so what people tend to do is um, they, 
Oh no, I can feel myself going into rant mode. Right. It, it's okay. okay. We're just gonna you, go you, for can, it. You, you can rant. <clears throat> oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Um <laughs> so what happens is people publish their podcast and they're usually doing it with like old advice. So stop me if this sounds familiar. In fact, don't stop me because I'm in rant mode. You probably not be able to. So <laughs> You've got to launch your podcast. You've got to get plenty of reviews. You've got to get plenty of ratings. You've got to do three to five episodes so that you can crush new and noteworthy and really up your listenership and your subscribers. You know, all that guff. That's a little bit old school advice, all right? Hi, Linda from North Yorkshire. I'm near North Yorkshire. Um, so you kind of, um, you've got to realize what you're trying to achieve with your podcast, all right? And what you're often trying to achieve is only one of a set number of things. And actually, it's usually only one of Two things. <clears throat> Number one, you want to build your network. So you want to meet people like Ian who can help you to enter a brave new world. You've taken your first step into a larger world. You know, you want to be the Luke Skywalker entering this new wide world and just finding out all of these new people and these new things. So that's like goal number one for a podcast is build your network. Goal number two is to make some money. Now, they can't really coexist as two primary objectives. They can coexist, but one of these objectives, make money or build your network, has to be the primary one, and the other one's the secondary one, right? And I'll explain that later. But <clears throat> the point is, if you want to make money, you're only going to be able to do it in two ways. Sell something or sell some people, okay? So if you sell something, it's something that you are selling. So let's assume that on Ian's podcast, Confident Live, uh, Confident Live... What is it, Ian? Marketing Confident. podcast. That's it. You, you, you remember the name. <laughs> I was so close. Confident live marketing. Ian wants to sell something of his. He has to be the man. He has to be the live stream, the live marketing, the live guy. And he is. Everyone knows Ian for that. So that's one fantastic facet. If you're going to sell your own thing, you have to be the center of attention. Um, if you are wanting to build your network, interview shows and so on and so forth are a fantastic way to do it. Now, I know you're thinking, well, Ian asked me a little bit about what to do after launch. I'm getting to that. And there's a reason that I've said those things first. Because what happens is that there are two sides to a launch. Okay, there's the technical side. There's the technical launch, the ability to make podcast X appear in app Y. And then there's the what do you do to grow the podcast? What do you, the person, do to launch this thing, but people think they're the same thing. And that's because you get a lot of bad advice from bad courses where people say, get into Apple podcasts, get your ratings and reviews, get into new and noteworthy. And they think that's enough. Okay? It's not. That's the technical launch. That's the technical launch. Okay. So what do you do? You need a hosting platform and a hosting platform is just a little bit of middleware. So a little bit of middleware that sits between you, the broadcaster talking into a microphone and me, the listener listening on my earphones. Now, the way that that works is that you take your audio files that are produced and you pop them on a hosting platform like Captivate. And we'll get to, we'll get to specifics about Captivate later, I'm sure, but you pop them on a hosting platform. And what that hosting platform does is it wraps them all up along with all of your settings and all the information about your podcast. And they put them in a box and that box is called an RSS feed. And that RSS feed contains episodes, items, episode one, episode two, episode three, item one, item two, item three. And it contains labels stuck on the outside of the box, your show name, your show description, the cover art, you know, that square cover art that you see. It contains all that stuff. And then the host does a couple of different things. It lets Apple and Spotify and everywhere else, Google Podcasts, Amazon, know about this box of content, this RSS feed, this podcast. And then what it does is it also measures when people listen to what's in this box, in this RSS feed, and it gives you analytics and a load of other things. So that's that's the most basic piece of, of podcast hosting. Now, we'll get to more specifics around it, I'm sure. Um, but that's what a podcast host does. As for what you do after launch, there's a range of things, but just to leave this segment for now, and I'm sure this will lead into another question, Ian, is that the, the podcast launch should always be treated as a two-step process. It should be, step number one should be pre-launch, which includes the technical launch and some best practices around uh, generating subscribers before the second phase, which is the physical launch, the marketed launch, all right? So mm. that's what a company does, and... Broadly speaking, a podcast launch should have two phases. Really love that. And that's quite good because that's kind of what we're, fo we're focusing on on stage one now, which is the technical launch. I hadn't quite 
thought of it in that way, but that makes total sense. We've got to, we've we've edited the podcast, we've put all that together. There's the whole pr- the process, the planning, all that kind of thing, and that leads up to us getting it onto all those different, um, all the, you know, those different directories using a podcasting host. Um, so let's focus on that first, and that before we then, obviously, the second stage, which is getting it out there, doing the marketing side of things. Um, that's phase two. So um, there are loads of different hosting companies out there. I I had a podcast about uh, 12 years ago, and I think what I did is I had it on my WordPress website. I had this little feed, or maybe I'd, I can't remember. I was using all these weird WordPress plugins, and then I had to kind of, I was using SoundCloud, and I was, it was really, really complicated. Now, these days, that's not what we do. Um, we we use a podcast host that hosts that RSS feed that you said. And if that sounds complicated, don't worry. You, doesn't, you don't need to know that it's an RSS feed. But the podcast host basically creates that for you. And you let me know if I'm, I'm getting this wrong, Mark. So, But you upload your episodes to the podcast host, and then that generates the RSS feed and allows you, hopefully, to put it, uh, plug that into all the podcast directories. Do you want to fill in a little bit more, fill in the gaps, and 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 maybe then let's talk about what Captivate does as well. And I've I've got to, I can share my screen as well. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. So that that's a great summary. I mean, you nailed it. You know, you could just do all my speaking gigs next year. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, so this is great. I get a week off. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know, it, it, I mean, other hosting platforms. You know, what's the best way to say this? Put it this way. The reason we created Captivate is because that's what most other hosting platforms do is just that bit. And we wanted to do more. We wanted to create more growth specific tools, um, which we'll get to later, actually, you know, the ability to help you to grow your show. But yeah, that's what, that's what a host does. It is that middle person that sits in between you and the directories. Now, a host like Captivate, you know, we, we work directly with Apple. We work directly with Amazon, Google, Spotify, Player FM, Ghana, GeoSav, and, um, radio.com, all of these different places, you know, we work directly with them. Um, you'd be better off as well, Ian, clicking on that feature list at the top because that's a good one. Um, it just kind of explains a little bit about what we're talking about. Um, so it generates the RSS feed. It gives you the, um, it gives you the, 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 all the, the embeddable podcast players, everything that you'd need to basically engage your audience. Um, so no, you nailed it, man. You know, distribution, is, is the first part of it. Get your audio files onto a host like Captivate, get it into Apple, get it into Spotify, get it into Google, and then start growing the thing. That's the that's the flow, you know? Yeah, and that makes total sense. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously, Mark is from Captivate. Captivate is Mark's baby. There are plenty of other hosts out there, and you need to do your own research, find out what works best for you. But what I particularly like about Captivate, or what I love about Captivate, is just the way it's so easy to put together, you know, you, you don't have to kind of spend loads and loads of time working out the technicalities of RSS feeds. I don't even, I think it probably does mention RSS feeds on Captivate, but you don't even, need, you don't need to know what one is. Um, but then the other thing, and I hope it's okay if I just show this, share this on my on my mm. screen, because this is the, the distribution part of um, Captivate. Let's see if I've got the right screen here. And so this is one thing that I just kind of blew my mind, really, because I've used other hosts in the past, and it was this was difficult. But you know, you've got some one-click buttons here. I mean, p- app, submitting to Apple Podcasts is not a one-click solution, depending on no matter which podcast host you've got. But um, some of the others are, you know. So publishing. So maybe if we could go through some of the directories, and if you could maybe just tell us briefly what we need to do to submit it to those channels, the pros and cons as well. So uh, let's. Uh, should we start off yeah. with Apple Podcasts? Well, I, I, actually, I can categorize them for you. Um, okay, that'd be cool. The vast, the vast majority of them are one click. So we. This is you know when again not wanting to call Spreaker out, it just came up earlier, uh, but you know this is one of the things that we are we are really handy at because we move really quick. Like we release features every single Thursday, every Thursday. So many of these distribution channels we add because they are so API focused. So what that means is we do one click data sharing, you know, we'll do one click analytics, we'll do one click submission. So Spotify, Amazon, podcast index, player FM, what else is under there, Ian? Um, oh, sorry, there should yeah. be plenty more under there. These are Ghana, Geo Savan. They are all one click. They are all just one click. You click the button and we, we've got direct integration with each of those. Apple Podcasts, um, Google is a little bit of an odd one because it works off 
SEO typically, but you can submit through Google. Apple Podcasts uh, and Google are really the only two, and some of the older ones like a Stitcher, where you've got to do like a little bit of manual work. And what that means is you, um, you got to click that button, go off to their site, put your RSS feed in, and then they crawl the RSS feed. Um, but there are really only two categories, like the direct pass-through ones like Spotify, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Player FM. And then the big one, the big two really, Apple Podcasts and Stitcher are the two that you've got to manually submit to and tentatively Google. Google operates a little weirdly. It, it actually crawls your website, see if it is, decides yeah. whether it can find a podcast feed and then, you know, it's a little bizarre. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, <clears throat> you know, one of the funny things about podcast hosting is that that's one of the, um, um, what's the best way to say this? Like you said, do your research. That's how I started Captivate from doing my research. I had the same setup as you, dude. I was using a another host, and I was using something for WordPress that rhymes with flower press, but isn't flower press, and to generate my RSS feed. And uh, it was a pain. It was a pain in the neck. And it was like, what's the point? You know, there's there's, there's got to be an easier way. So we, I, I genuinely built Captivate to scratch my own itch. Now, when you look through Captivate, you'll see that I'm an itchy person. So everything's easy like distribution shouldn't have to be that hard that's a that's an itch i've got to scratch so we'll make that easier and that it that's really what you need from a podcast host because here's the situation you know if you are if you are constantly worried about tech if you're constantly worried about what well, does this work does this happen right when i do this how do i set this up how do i set that up what are you not going to do you're not going to spend any time actually growing your podcast. You'll still produce the podcast because that's the backpack work. That's the great stuff that you can do and you enjoy it, but you'll not spend any time growing it. And then what will happen is you'll quit podcasting because podcasting doesn't work for me because you, you know, tech's held you back or time's held you back. So our job in, in, in podcasting, frankly, is to demystify a lot of it, to stop it being that big old school, cumbersome, complicated thing that all, all the incumbents kind of hold on to. Um, so that's, you know, that's a real kind of mission statement of Captivate. I know that's a slight digression, but I think it helps to quantify why your time is so paramount in podcasting. You know, if you're not growing your podcast, it's probably because you've not put the time in and you've probably not put the time in because you don't have the time. So let's give you the time back. I know that's a waffle in, but you know what I'm saying. No, no, no. I think it's really important. And I think there's certain things that you absolutely need to invest that time in, into. And delving into the intricacies of RSS feeds and WordPress is probably not one of them, you know, unless you're a total geek like me and Mark. I think I used to enjoy it. I just don't think I would enjoy that anymore. Now, I just I just want to focus on creating that content. And that's what using a host like Captivate will allow you to do. Do that planning. That planning to begin with is so important. We've talked about that on the show. We're not going to be talking about that today. So, okay, so we've, we've, we've done that. We've got a host and if would you would you recommend that we just submit our podcast to all those to, you know all the ones that you've got on the captivate page or would you say there are two or three that we should focus on first of all what's your view on that all of them and that's why we built distribution mm. to be like that i know it's sort of a i'm not a fan of the whole be everywhere scenario i don't think it works i think it's it's a, a nice idea for those that can outsource everything um and I, I'm always a fan of picking one or two channels, but in podcasting, you know, you don't know people's preferences when it comes to consuming content. It's like being able to get the Netflix app on my PlayStation and my Xbox and my TV and my Fire Stick and my Apple TV and my phone and my iPad. <clears throat> can even get it on my bloody car, you know? So you, 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 it's not about being everywhere. It's about having access to the content everywhere. So that's the subtle difference um, with that. So getting all the apps and when you launch, <clears throat> there's, a, there's an inherent problem in podcasting, which is the word subscribe. Now, why is it a problem? Well, we only use the word subscribe in podcasting for one reason, because RSS is predicated on subscriptions. If you think RSS was, was a, an old blogging technology, really simple syndication, it basically meant that every time I put a new blog post out, then the readers could get that and they could give it to me the reader and then when ian put another blog post i was like hey mark look guess what ian's put a new blog out you can read it at your leisure rather than me going to the website to get it <clears throat> so rss is predicated on this old technology where the word subscribe is 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 um prominent in its ecosystem 
but it's a problem. What else do we subscribe to? Well, we subscribe to Netflix, like we just talked about, and Amazon Prime, and we subscribe to Gray's boxes and to comics and to magazines, and we subscribe to software. And guess what? All of that is paid. We pay for everything else that we subscribe to. Subscribe and save is a thing on Amazon. That says it all. So we've kind of got this inherent challenge, okay? So yes, number one, be everywhere. Literally just submit. It'll take you five minutes just to submit everywhere. So get there. But when you're doing your launch, I know I'm not here to talk too deeply about this, but just a little tip. When you do your podcast launch, launch with a trailer, all right? Now, all the old advice will be launch with three episodes and hammer your ratings and reviews. It makes not one bit of difference. Not one. I, could, I, I promise you, it makes not one bit of difference. Instead, what we have to do is get people to press that weird little subscribe button before we relaunch our, before we launch our podcast in phase two. So we we launch with a trailer. We do a pile of marketing around the trailer, and one of our calls to action is, "Hey, press that subscribe button in Apple Podcasts, so that when I do release the first three episodes, which I'll do, so that you can binge them, you can enjoy them, you can really get hooked on me." You're already subscribed and you'll get them sent to you. You will just get them in your podcast app. So that's a real kind of little, it's a cheeky little launch hack that not many people are teaching, but it works. All right. I did it with um, Jamie Anderson from uh, who runs the Jerry Anderson podcast, Thunderbird, Stingray, Captain Scarlet. He launched First Action Bureau on Captivate with Patterson Joseph, um, Genevieve Gaunt from the Harry Potter series. Really fantastic show, like really, really good stuff. Um, and we did that strategy with them and it worked. It worked. The day one downloads were far higher than their previous show had been. So um, just a little tip, again, another mild digression here, but I think it's No, that's great. It, and, and that reminds me actually of a few things just before we get onto the promotion side of things. These are kind of maybe a little bit boring and technicalities, but just I know that people will be asking these questions. And by the way, I can, I can see some questions. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. They're more uh, promotion questions. I'm going to get on to promotion next. So I'm not ignoring you. But so when when we've created the the, we, the podcast episode, we go into, so for example, on Captivate, if I'm creating a new show, we've got to fill in a few details here. We've got the podcast name, subtitle, all this kind of stuff. And then we've got cover art and things like that. Could you just briefly take us through, you know, all the things that we need to think about when we're creating this, and particularly when it comes to cover art, because I know that that kind of freaks some people out because they're not really sure what they should be doing there. Do you know, I recorded an episode today, which was podcast cover art mistakes to avoid. It was a question that came from <laughs> uh, a chap called Doug. Uh, right. Podcast cover art. Um, I was looking, I don't know why I was looking for a CD. Like I'd have one. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's pretend I've got a CD. Here's CD. Um, your album cover art is basically what your podcast cover art is, all right? And what a lot of people do is they'll think they can do it themselves. Um, you probably can't. You know, that's that's a fact. Um, and I'll tell you why. You know, it's a square image that sits at the front of your podcast, and it's, it's the album art. It's the thing that people see. It's the poster for your podcast, all right? It's probably the most important element of your podcast for discoverability. You know, there's a couple of other things, your title and so on and so forth, but um, it's, it's up there as one of the top three things for discoverability. So it's this square artwork. It goes on the front of your podcast, and you can do episode-level artwork as well, which is another conversation. But you do this cover art, all right? It's got to be between 1,400 pixels square and 3,000 pixels square, under 500 KB, in size um, and just got to look nice, all right? Can't have swearing on it, can't have any of that stuff. So, <clears throat> oh no, this might be a rant. A lot of people <laughs> do a few things weirdly on their cover art. Um, the biggest mistake is putting yourself on there. Like I've been in podcasting now for nearly 10 years. I've been in podcasts really bad, I'm really old. I've been in podcasting for 10 years nearly and I've just this year, put myself on the cover. And only because people know me. People ask me to do this sort of thing, and I own Captivate, and I run it, and I work with thousands and podcasters and speak all over the world about podcasting. And it's this year, 2021, that I've decided to put me on the cover. Do you know why? Because I don't matter. I'm not what people are tuning in for. Unless I'm a celeb, unless I'm Bruce Springsteen and Barack Obama, there's no point putting me on because no one's going to scroll through and go, look at that guy. I'm listening to that. No one, no one is. I mean, I know I've got a nice jacket and that, you know, that, that nice high contrast picture on my pictures. People still aren't going to stop and look. All right. That's a fact. 
So that's a mistake that people make. The second mistake people make is <clears throat> like they get really, they get really cute with their podcast title. And like you do this really well, Ian, you're a cute guy, but your podcast title doesn't try to be cute. Confident live marketing. It does what it says on the tin. My podcast, the podcast accelerator. Boom. Simple as that. What a lot of people try and do is they'll try and introduce these fancy concepts on their cover art where they introduce a really cute name. And if you read the tagline to the show, it's all explained what that cute name means. The problem is the cover art is about as big as one of these squares on the Rubik's Cube. It's tiny. It won't get red. It can't get red. It's too small. So that's a mistake that people make. All right. They put themselves on there. They go for a really cute kind of podcast name. And then they explain it away in a tagline that's kind of bundled up somewhere on the cover art. Wrong. What you have to do is think about this. People are scrolling through Spotify. They're scrolling through Apple. They're scrolling, they're scrolling, they're scrolling, they're scrolling. And why are they scrolling? Because the thing that you want to rank for in Spotify and, and, and iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it is now, because they are, of course, search engines, the thing that you want to rank for has been searched for. Star Wars podcast how to build a podcast, how to be a confident live marketer. And they're scrolling, trying to find the thing that, that, that they want to listen to. Which one do they stop on? The one that catches their eye, not the one that tries to explain what's going on. This is just an actual fact of podcast marketing. And it's a reason that movie posters exist and that album covers are designed to stand out on, on a shelf. It's very rare that a debut album will have a picture of the debutante, the artist on the cover as the main piece. It might have them on, but it's very rarely the main piece. Usually it's a conceptual thing that kind of stands out on a shelf. So think about that with your cover art. It's vital, 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 because it really is. In my view, it's certainly the, one of the top three things that you should get right for your podcast. Now you can't design this yourself. And I know you're thinking, and like, I've thought the same. I am not a designer. I can fire up Canva and I can create a square that fits the specification, 1400 pixels square to 3000 pixels square, but I can also mix up a bit of gobbo and throw some bricks up, but I ain't going to live in it. <laughs> so the situation is that you only really get one chance to get a prospect to listen, okay? And you have to catch their eyes. So you don't have to pay for your design, but if you don't want to pay for your design, please use a template from Canva and don't customize it too much. Just change the name, maybe tweak it ever so slightly, but remember that those designers have designed that template like that for a reason. Um, so it, cover, art, so cover, cover art even is a huge thing, Ian. It's a huge, huge thing. Yeah, totally agree. And I agree with you that get, get it ideally professionally designed, but just uh, don't do it yourself. I mean, I'm exactly the same as you. I'm not a designer. I like to think I know what looks good, but <laughs> that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, so the, the the podcast art is, the cover art is really important. The title is really, really important. And then just briefly on, we were talking about, uh, you start it off with um, a trailer. So this is one thing you can do in Captivate and presumably other hosts as well. So you can set, um, you know, what is the episode type? Is it just a normal episode? Is it a trailer? Is it a bonus episode? So you create create a trailer um you've also got the the option to have seasons as well and we had colin gray on the show talking about the advantages and disadvantages of having seasons and then of course you've got uh, episode numbers as well so anything more to say on that on that screen mark <clears throat> yeah a couple of things um number one your publish time uh, that's a captivate only feature no one else does a default publish time um so we allow you to set a default in your show settings so if your default that you always want to publish is 9 a.m., that publish time will always be defaulted to 9 a.m. Um, that's because I'm lazy. I don't see the point <laughs> in changing the time every time. So we built that default thing in. But there are a couple of things on there that, that are a little bit more advanced that I think you should be using. Um, number one, you see that little uh, checkbox there in that says, would you like to use an Apple podcast episode summary? The answer yeah. should always be yes. Okay. And what that summary should be is just a paragraph, you know, a really small two to three line paragraph, because what that does is it acts like a meta description in Apple podcasts and Spotify. And if Apple podcast doesn't have one, what will happen is that it will take all your show notes that you've really nicely formatted. And in 
the search results, it will take those show notes that you've made look really pretty and it will just smush them together. It will take all the formatting out. So put a summary in, even if it's just one sentence, always summarize your episode. Uh, another couple of nifty things as well, Ian, <clears throat> that, uh, that I think a lot of people will get some benefit from. Um, transcriptions, you can add a transcript to each episode. Very, very good for accessibility. Uh, decent for long tail SEO, but importantly, very, very powerful for um, for accessibility. And then if you just, the advanced options section right at the bottom, just hit that for us, please. Because these are very, very important things. Um, we allow private podcasting on, on Captivate. We're the only host that lets you create an internal podcast just for private subscribers um, with up to 150 subscribers. No other host does that for free. You've got to pay for that, okay? You can also create some privacy here by taking this episode out of the RSS feed. So let's assume that Confident Live Marketing produces episode 100, and you say, guess what? For everyone that's a member of my um, membership, I'm going to embed a special episode onto my website, but I don't want to create an entirely new private RSS feed driven podcast. I can publish that bonus episode for the special listeners, exclude it from the feed and embed it. Now that is very, very good for membership owners and people that are kind of in the business space who want to successfully launch a podcast. Why? Because there's nothing better for building fans and advocacy in podcasting than letting people in behind the scenes. It's why live streaming is a great complement to podcasting, and podcasting is a great complement to live streaming, whichever your focus is. Um, so that's very useful. And the last thing that I'll mention is that set episode expiration date. Two ways you can use this. One of them is innovative. One of them is not. One of them is like air quotes innovative. Uh, the air quotes innovative one is like, Christmas messages, Easter messages, International Women's Day West messages. If you want to put something out that's timely, you can then remove this automatically from your feed later. But the reason I mentioned that one, Ian, is because when it comes to launching, this can be very powerful. Why? Easy. Here's my trailer, blah, 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 blah. And if you subscribe right now, you will hear a bonus episode that will disappear within two days. So you hit the subscribe now and you are going to get that. Oh, here's a sneak peek of episode one. Click the subscribe button, get a hold of it. And so you can use it to your advantage. I don't really like adding scarcity. I think a lot of it's rubbish. But in this case, I think you can use it to your advantage by not being, you know, you're not being too uh, bullshy on it. You're just giving people a little bit of a teaser content that you then pull back later. Um, so very, very handy for launching. Love that. Really, really uh, fabulous advice there. I've not... Shot Core, I've been using the Apple Podcast episode summary, so I'm going to be doing that from now on. Do you know um, what as well? Just a, a, a little yeah. quick tip as well. Um, use episode level cover art as well. So if you go to my podcast uh, in Spotify, the Podcast Accelerator, in the search results, more and more, more and more directories are doing this. They're respecting the episode level artwork, and it will make your it will make your episodes stand out amongst the sea of others. Because every other podcast, or most of the other podcasts, use just the cover art for the for the, the main mm. show for every episode. It's just a default. If you are the one that's using episode level cover art at the same spec, but make it look different, put the title on, it will really stand out. Now, why is that important for launching? <clears throat> well, honestly. Google Podcasts has got such a focus on episodic level consumption. It's not pushing people to subscribe. It's surfacing content at search result level, at the SERPs level, that is episode specific. So, you know, you might search for like, is Obi-Wan Kenobi in the, you know, whatever, the Mandalorian. If we've done a Star Wars episode on the Star Wars show about it, and it's called something related to that query, that episode, not the show, but the episode will appear there. Now, what gets click-throughs? We know that what get clicks, gets click-throughs is relevance. What's more relevant than the featured image, the episode image matching the search query? So get into the episode level stuff. And people tend to do this after like episode 100. But if you do it early, you will already be ahead of so many podcasters. <laughs> well, that's that's me. <laughs> I've got up to over episode 100 and I've not been doing it. But but I think it's a great idea, a great thing to do. And I'm going to be doing that because I'm creating art for every episode anyway. So it's like a, yeah, no brain, no brainer, really. Well, it's time. We, we're kind of over halfway and uh, press the wrong button there. There we go. Let's click the right button. And uh, we're going to be talking about 
moving over to promotion and I can see a question from George there which I want to bring in but just before we do that just to let you know that my launch your live has is the doors are open from yesterday so this is a course that will show you how you can launch your live show and podcast so this this particular one we're going to be focusing also on making a podcast from your live show so here's a little bit more about it Hello, do you want to launch a professional live show and a podcast? You know, a regular live show is so powerful for so many reasons. First of all, it's a great way to grow your audience and community, people who actually want to work with you and buy from you. And of course, once you launch it, it becomes a powerful repurposing engine. Launch Your Live is a 10 day course that teaches you how to launch a successful live show. But not only that, it also helps you to launch your podcast from your live show. In the course, we'll cover how to plan, promote, produce, and repurpose your live shows and podcasts. And I'll be sharing with you my templates and processes with you. I'll cover all the gear and tools that you need, including cameras, lights, microphones, and live video tools such as Ecom Live, Restream, and OBS Studio. I'll show you how to use those things to level up your impact, authority, and profits. I'll be sharing my top camera and communication tips with my Confident Live warm-up formula. And that includes things like improving your posture, breath control, diction, and more, and getting over maybe that fear and anxiety that sometimes you feel when you press that go live button. The course is drip fed over the first five days, and I'll be giving live training in the group every single day for that first week. The second week is all about doing and practicing, putting all of that that you've learned into producing a successful live show and podcast. So I can't wait to work with you. What are you waiting for? Join the waiting list or sign up below and let's launch your live. So there you go. That's Launch Your Live. The the doors are already open. The course itself starts on Monday, next Monday. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That's really exciting. Uh, if you've just joined, this is the Podcaster Hour, and today I've got Mark Asquith with, on the show. We're talking about podcast hosts and also how to promote it. And also just to say, unfortunately, this is the last episode of the Podcaster Hour. But don't worry, uh, we will come back with uh, some really exciting uh, shows in the future. And of course, there are loads of shows on Ecams. Every single day there is a live show, so definitely check it out. So... Mark, we need to talk about promotion. We've got a question here that George asked quite a while ago, um, but it, this kind of maybe bring us into this. <laughs> this is what a lot of people talk about because you, we've talked about the two, there are two stages to this. We've talked about the technical launch. George is asking, I'm launching a new backyard cooking food podcast with a, bu- with a buddy. How do we promote this in a way that more than a fraction of our own friends on social media listen? Why would you want (laughs) to think about it, right? You're launching a new backyard cooking and food podcast with a friend. All right. That's fine. That is exactly what you want to happen. So don't, this is, this is like exactly what I wrote about today. So in the chat, right, we've got want to become famous buy followers, primes and viewers on Cutly. All right. So if you want, go and do that or understand it's absolute garbage, okay? So the reason that I'm saying this is because, George, you are you are in one of the most sweetest spots ever for podcasting, and 90% of people want to do this and then do that garbage that I've just talked about. They want to accelerate something. They don't have the time to learn how to be a marketer because no one tells you that's the bit that you've kind of got to get under under the skin of in order to grow this thing. Um, so then they think, well, wait a sec, I've not got this amazing growth that other people must have in podcasting, but you are in such a sweet spot because what do people want from a podcast like yours? Recommendations. Where did you get that, that smoked ribs recipe from? Oh, it was from the guy, George, and the, he lives three streets down and he does this podcast. What's a podcast? Well, a podcast is on-demand audio that you can listen to. And you can get it anywhere you want. And guys like George, two doors down, teach all this really cool stuff. Now, flippant, yes. Gets the attention? Of course. That's what I'm here for, all right? So what we need to do is think about it like this, okay? You are producing a piece of content that you can't see me on, 
Okay, all you can do is pipe my voice into your ear. And that's really intimate. That's really powerful. So whenever you're building anything, you start, as you know, with the inner circle, which is your friends and it's your family and it's everyone else. Um, and you, 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 you're the epicenter of it right in the middle and you build out from that friends and family, friends and family, friends and family. But what people don't do is just ask their friends and family to take action, to do something, to help to share that experience, to go through the process of helping other people to subscribe because yours is a great example, all right? It's a backyard cooking show and you are clearly trying to target a specific set of people who are probably like you. So why bother with all, with all of this online difficulty to start with? Why not Talk to the people that you already know, the people that inspired you to like this. If you can get to 500 listeners, 100 listeners, 50 listeners, because of your niche and because of where you are, you will get sponsorship. I know people that make six figures in sponsorship with three-figure downloads, like I said earlier. This is one of the biggest myths in podcasting that you've got to explode your growth or you've got to do crazy social media or you've got to build this huge email list. All that's amazing. But get to the followers that you can get to first, all right? And the people around you will listen. And importantly, they will tell other people about it. Now, what can you do to aid that? Well, you can do, I wish I had some merch here. You can do some pretty cool stuff, right? Instead of spending your money on social media tools and buying that AppSumo offer that never expires because you get an amazing social media thing, forget any of that. Instead, spend a hundred bucks on some badass merch, all right? So get yourself some nice stickers, get yourself some aprons, get yourself, like I don't know, some maybe little cooking gloves or some stickers that you can put on, on your kitchen utensils, get branded toothpicks, get something for your niche and just give them away. Just give them away. But the kicker is, that's hundred bucks, all right? You can get plenty for that. The kicker is this. There are so many people that are ready to listen to something that you are producing because they love the thing that you talk about, but they don't know about podcasting. So on this merchandise, put, listen to my on-demand audio for free by clicking this link. Now, if you're a Captivate user, you get a single subscription link. You can just go to sparkerebellion.com slash listen. So whatever your domain is, slash listen, that gives them the place to go and listen and subscribe, all right? Why is it important to do that? Because it's easier to access people that love what you talk about than it is to figure out how many people like podcasting and then let's figure out who likes, out of them people that like podcasting, who are the people that like my stuff? Be the person that educates, all right? Get some merch, spend 100 quid on it, get it out into your local area and I promise you, you'll be surprised how many people want to get involved. How do I know that? Because I've got a Star Wars podcast. It works, like we did that for us. Everyone likes Star Wars or everyone's not seen Star Wars. You'd literally fall into three camps, like it, dislike it, never seen it. That is it. And people, everyone's the same. Everyone's the same. Everyone falls into that camp, whether it's someone online or someone 30 feet from you. So get local, George, get local. That was a long one, that game, wasn't it? It was, and it was, but it's, it's good stuff. I think we've got to, there's so, so, so much advice out there on how to explode our podcast shows and it's really important to think well who who is our audience you know who are we wanting to to see to listen to our podcast and I think also we need to think about like to be realistic about what kind of downloads or subscribers we should be looking for is that the the most important thing and you've said you know you've got I can't remember the figures but you know um of podcast hosts who have three figure downloads per episode who are you know, getting some good sponsorship deals. So, you know, what this, so this is, this is the kind of question that if I was you, I would hate, but I'm going to ask it anyway, which is, you know, what kind of downloads should we be looking at to begin with? When we launch our show, what should that focus be? How do we know whether our podcast is a success? And should we be looking at that uh, on day one uh, in, in the next four weeks or the first year? How fast do you want to run a mile in? <laughs> yeah. Who, who cares? Is it faster than you did yesterday? That's what matters, okay? And the reason I ask that question, and again, being a little bit flippant, is that unless you put a figure on it, you don't know whether you're successful or not. And that's the situation. How much is enough? How much do you need to, to, to um, pay your mortgage? How much do you need to have a nice life? How much do you need 
to lose in terms of weight. I can say that because I'm um, I'm losing weight right now, apparently. Uh, and George, yes, I saw you're a marketer. That's awesome. Yeah, buying subs is rubbish. High five. Um, so put a target on it. That's the first thing. Um, put a target on it. Doc Rock, if your mum is downloading, you've won. That is so I use my mum as that very example, Doc. Honestly, I really do because my mum's that target element, all right? Um, she has got no idea what podcasting is, even though I work on it. Apparently to her, I work in computers. Brilliant. Thanks, mum. Um, <laughs> my dad's an electrician. She never says he works in screwdrivers. You know what I mean? It's just a tool. Um, so what is a good number? Well, the average podcast episode, don't worry about monthly downloads, the average podcast episode um, gets around 138 downloads per episode. That's from a good friend, Rob Walsh. Um, he always goes on about that figure. And if you're above that, you're above average, all right? What you should be thinking about is how do you how do you do something that will well two things how do you do something that will move the needle and you know you guys look out there uh, uh, you know in the marketing space and number two what is the actual KPI now downloads unless you are selling sponsorship and I'm really specific on that unless you're selling sponsorship of your show which is on a CPM basis cost per meal as you you marketers will know cost per thousand downloads, unless you are one of those very specific people that sell sponsorship, the number of downloads doesn't matter. It's what's around the downloads that matters. You want to grow your email list? Keep telling people to get on your email list. If you get 10 more listeners and only one of them subscribes to your email list, up that number from one to two and from two to four and four to eight. And you've, so you've got to put these KPIs around your podcast, all right? You know, we talked right back at the beginning about there really only been a couple of ways or reasons that people podcast to build a network or to sell something. Associate KPIs with them. When I first started my podcast, um, I did 150 episodes of an interview podcast because goal number one for me, actually I had two goals. Number one, learn what was wrong in podcasting. And I spent a lot of time and money going to the conferences and speaking at them. But the precursor to that was to be able to get speaking gigs. So I interviewed people like Ian. I interviewed people like Chris Brogan and, you know, whoever, Guy Cowers, all these usual faces and built my network up really quickly. Suddenly I went from being a guy in Barnsley that had a good agency to being a guy in Barnsley that had a good agency and a good podcast and knew loads of people. And Ian, you'll be the same. You know, you, you know everyone. I know everyone. We're in this space where that works, all right? So if that's your goal... What are the KPIs, speaking gigs, inquiries? What does that look like? Okay, but then what you've got to think about then is that the downloads are just the means to the end. If the conversion rates show that you get 10 downloads, uh, 10 downloads of your ebook through your lead magnet, if you've got 50 subscribers, the th first thing you do is, as marketers, of course, is change that 10 to 20. And then you try and scale the 50 to 1,000 so that that proportionally scales and you get more of, more of the right thing. Podcasting is no different. So how do you grow your numbers? I wish we had another hour. Um, so how do you grow your numbers? <laughs> yeah. um, there's, um, do a Google search for, um, what, should I, what should we go with? Do a search for listener acquisition flow. All right. It's a concept that's, it's a marketing, strategic marketing concept for podcasters that I've put together. Listener acquisition flow. Okay. And all it does is it talks about how you grow your downloads by targeting three or four different types of people. Also search for podcast discoverability triangle as well. I can send some links to you. Um, what you do is you do what I just said to George. You start with people that know you and because how many friends have we got that like the thing that we talk about on our podcast? Probably a decent percentage because that's what friends do. So you work out from that epicenter and you, you build repeatable marketing processes for your episodes that then allow you to automate a little bit of that. Thanks, dude. Um, and then what you do is you start building out. So you think to yourself, well, wait a second, there are three types of people that listen or potentially would listen to podcasts. People who know about podcasting but don't know about me. People that don't know about podcasting but love the thing that I talk about. And people who know about me and know about podcasting that want to share so that I can access more of the other two people, all right? You've got to build strategies for those. Now, like I said to George, the easiest place to start, the easiest way to, ah, there it is, that's an old school one. Um, the easiest way to do this, target people who love what you do, but that don't know about podcasting. Target people that love what you do and don't know about podcasting. 
So should should downloads be at the center of everything that you do? No. Should they be measured? Yes. Should they increase? Yes. Should they have a target? Yes. But they're probably the highest up the ladder they will get, unless you're selling sponsorship, is number three. There will be at least two other metrics that should be higher, in my view. Um, so yeah, Docs just mentioned, vanity metrics are so misleading. Um, but if your goal is to make money, focus on solving pain points for the listener, the dollars will come. That is true. That is true. You know, and that's 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 the classic sort of add value and listen and ask people what they're struggling with. And the downloads, all they do is allow you to ask more people the same question. Um, and that that's the that's the role that downloads play. But to answer the question directly, if you're above 138 downloads per episode, you are above average. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you for that. We're, we're out of time, really. But just, you know, are there any kind of final thoughts in terms of like growing our podcast? Are there, is, are there such are there such a thing as little kind of tiny things that we can do on a regular basis? Or is it just hard work and, and you know, doing what you've just said, which is to tell, uh, to, to tell, to encourage the people who aren't normal podcast listeners to listen to our podcast any other kind of final tips really that we can end with on how to grow our podcast definitely man thank you for for having me it's been a pleasure um i'm going to distill a 35 minute talk now down into one minute or less <laughs> which is this so george has just said i love the trailer tip earlier go and copy the trailer format okay so just search for uh, mark asquith trailer format go and steal that or go podcastsuccessacademy.com, get the crib sheet because it's in there, the trailer format, just steal that format. It works, right? Now, the reason I say this is because um, the single biggest thing that you can do to grow the podcast and the quickest thing that you can do is change all of your calls to action from, I've just put a new episode out with Ian, go and subscribe, change that to, I've just put a new episode out with Ian. Listen to the trailer for the show to see whether or not you will like it. Why? I don't care about Ian until I know about him. When you get to know him, you love him. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But if I see his picture scrolling on Twitter and I've never seen him, I don't care. We've got to make people care. The way you do that is by asking them to put 90 seconds, not 45 minutes, of their time into the trailer. Then, last tip as part of that, in your trailer... I want you to curate your best episode. Go to your podcast analytics, or if you don't have that yet, if you're not signed up for Captivate, if you've not been on the podcast hosting, you don't have the analytics yet, guess which you think your audience will like the most, and your call to action within your trailer is to go and listen to your best episode. Okay? So, hey, this is Mark Asquith. I teach people how to build their podcast when they are really, really busy. If you want to grow your podcast, I release every single Monday and Friday. And if you're interested in learning more, go and listen to episode 27, where I go and talk to Ian Anderson Gray about why live streaming is the number one way to boost your reach as a podcaster. See you soon. That's it. So you, you send people to the trailer as you call to action. And then in that trailer, curate people to your best, most downloaded episode. That is going to send you that way when most people are going, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't flounder, send to trailer, curate. Love that. That's so, so powerful. I mean, it's just a simple thing, but, you know, investing 45 minutes in your, of your life in a person that you don't know, a podcast that you don't know anything about is quite an ask. So that's really great advice. Well, thank you, Mark. That's amazing. So yeah, I, I think we could probably go on for a whole hour, an extra hour. And obviously, I think we need to get you back on the on the future show if we're going to be talking about podcasting again. So, uh, obviously, people can find out more about Captivate. It's Captivate.fm, I think I'm right in saying, isn't it? That's the one. That's yeah, the that's one, Captivate.fm. And how, how else can people stalk you? Uh, and I think you're you're a Twitter man, aren't you? I am a Twitter man. We need to do a space. I need to email you. Um, we do, that, we do need I? to do Twitter spaces, yeah. That'd be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, so at Mr. Asquith on Twitter, um, and we've got a crib sheet for launching your podcast as well at podcastsuccessacademy.com. Um, that's got everything from a, a trailer format you can steal um, right through to live coaching every Friday. So just go and get that. Look how hyperbolic that title is. It is. I feel like someone I'd write about. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where, where's the best place on this website for people to go to? Just click the green button. 
Okay. Um, and it'll take you that. down. You just you just scroll down it. You get all the action there. You'll just you'll, it's all there. It is all there. You'll get everything from that, um, awesome. including the crib sheet. But for me personally, honestly, I'll ask, answer any questions. You can tell I'm I'm, I'm not shy of chatting. So at Mr. Asquith on Twitter. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, George is very, very happy. Uh, it says it was incredible. You, amazing advice. And I definitely agree. And uh, Adam G. Harmonica says, uh, fellow musician, have had my head turned around. Thanks, Mark and Ian. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. This, the, I know there were lots of other uh, comments and questions, so I couldn't get through all of them. But do uh, keep the questions coming and we'll be able to come back into the comments and answer those Thanks, Mark. It's been great to great to have you on the show. And just a, just a reminder uh, about the launch. You're live, uh, which is launching this week. It's already launched. Just go to iag.me forward slash l y l. That's a course that will help you launch your live show, but also your podcast from that. Uh, Katie Simpson is here as well. Great to see you, Katie, who agrees with George. And I miss you too, George. Yeah, it's um, yeah, with social media marketing world not happening. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to start crying. It's it's just it's a, it's a sad year, isn't it? But um, hopefully later this year, are you going to are you hoping to go to any conferences, Mark? Yeah, we're, we're sort of in that weird position. Yeah. Like, you know, we want to be wants to be in San Diego again, just because why would you not? But I don't know this year, <laughs> mate. It's a tough one. But fingers crossed for uh, for the exactly. end of the year. Exactly. Well, that's the end of the show for today. And well, it's actually the end of the podcast hour. But of course, you can watch the replay of all the episodes. Um, they, they're all on the Ecamm channel. Uh, I, I normally say at this point, we're live every Monday at 4pm, but I don't need to say that, say that anymore. But uh, yeah, it's been great to be your host over the last 10 episodes. And until next time, I encourage you to launch your podcast with the success through the power of Ecamm Live. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching the podcaster hour from Ecamm, helping entrepreneurs, business owners, and live streamers launch a podcast with success using the power of Ecamm Live. That's it for this week, but do tune in next time. See you soon and toodaloo.